beneath the surface of ponds and also in the oceans of the world is where the algae live and where their waste product is produced. That waste product, so very important to us, is oxygen. Algae like this, branching, thinner than a human hair, producing the oxygen we'll eventually breathe. Those little single-celled green algae are responsible for about 50% of the oxygen of the present atmosphere. The oxygen that we breathe and that every complex animal uses for its life processes. There are very many kinds of algae at the present day and they're also widely represented in the fossil record. One of the places where they're best exposed to view is on the shores of one of the islands in Great Slave Lake. This is a veritable algal meadow preserved in rock. The algae thrived about 1,700 million years ago and were covered by a few feet of Precambrian sea. The sea bottom was mushy and muddy. Several thousand feet of rock have since been removed in order to give this exhumed sea bottom. Now, picture the situation. Algae, particularly little single-celled kind, are producing oxygen in the water. That oxygen is combining with iron in order to produce iron formation. Now, there's only so much iron in the seawater. The iron has to come from the, the land originally, dissolved in water of rivers, but there's only so much of it. And what's going to happen when it's all used up? Well, the oxygen, instead of combining with iron in the water, is going to bubble through to the surface and start producing an oxygen atmosphere. Well, that's what we would assume would happen. How can we see this in the geological record? Well, one of the things that happens is that about 1.8 billion years ago, we find that iron formation disappears. There are no banded iron formations of the kind that there are at Tomogamy younger than 1.8 billion years. So conditions obviously changed. There are no more uranium deposits of the kind that there are at Elliott Lake after 1.8 billion years ago. Instead of those deposits, which depended upon the early atmospheric and ocean conditions, we find red beds. Beds of sandstone that are red colored because they contain iron oxide, and that iron oxide is derived from the action of oxygen in the atmosphere on iron minerals in rocks on the land surface. This is still going on at the present day, and that large sample is a sample of schist, the iron minerals of which have been oxidized by the oxygen in the present atmosphere. So that, if you like, was the watershed in the history of the atmosphere 1.8 billion years ago. Let's just look at that in summary. The accumulation of the Earth by cold accretion, particles and gas, about 4.6 billion years ago. We think it's probable, but not certain, some scientists still think it's possible, that the early gases escaped. We think they escaped. Life originated perhaps 3.6 billion years ago or so, and in the oceans of 3.3 billion years ago, algae were evidently present to produce oxygen, which led to the deposition of banded iron formations. About 1.8 billion years ago, the iron in the seas was used up, and it bubbled through to the atmosphere, where red beds were then produced by atmospheric oxygen acting on the rocks on land. There's a second, probably important, level about 0.6 billion years ago at the beginning of the Paleozoic, when there was a lot of oxygen in the atmosphere and complex life began to evolve. We'll look at that in a later program. So much for the atmosphere and the oceans, but what were the ingredients for life and how did life begin? One of the first experiments carried out in order to test hypotheses on the origin of life was conducted by Stanley Miller in 1953. In a flask, Miller mixed the suggested ingredients of the early atmosphere. 
methane, ammonia, water, and hydrogen. And then through this gassy, watery mixture, he discharged an electric spark. And when the products of the experiments were carefully analyzed, new material was found to have been created. In fact, four amino acids were found, the structural units of proteins which make up all living matter. Much more complex apparatus is now used to provide more careful chemical conditions for experiments such as that carried out by Miller. In this case, the water vapor is being frozen out in order to get exact proportions of methane and ammonia. And instead of the electric spark, which Miller used, ionizing radiation, intense radiation, is now used for about an hour. The use of this radiation is obviously not without its, its hazards. Although no visible change can be seen in the, in the mixture, new molecules are being, are being synthesized. The solution, when analyzed, very carefully and sophisticated apparatus shows that sugars and purines and pyrimidines, which are all essential elements of living matter, have been formed. All these molecules are necessary for the evolution of life. The mixture of gases which Miller used, ammonia and methane, dissolved in water, is not a mixture that most scientists would start with at present. That was in 1953, and since then, most people have begun to think that probably those gases, as I mentioned, were lost from the early Earth, although they are present in the atmospheres of other of our planets. Most scientists would now start with water, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, hydrogen, some carbon monoxide, which is another of the volcanic gases, and they would use an energy source probably similar to Miller's, a discharge simulating a lightning stroke, or they might use heat, or they might use ultraviolet radiation, or even shock from a meteorite impact has been suggested as a possible energy source to make more complex molecules out of those gases in a watery medium, and water is very important. We're very fortunate on this planet to be just the right distance from the sun, we're not too far away so that the water doesn't freeze, and not so close like Venus is that the water uh, is lost because it's too hot. So in the watery medium, with the application of energy, one can make other molecules from the gases produced by volcanoes. One of those that one can make is cyanide. Now that seems to be a very, very strange starting point for life anything like you or I would die very quickly given a dose of cyanide. But it was probably one of the compounds that was present in the waters on the early Earth. And don't think of those as oceans. Think of them as isolated pools or, or lakes or small seas or, or whatever with hydrogen cyanide in. Another of the molecules one can make with those volcanic gases is formaldehyde, which some of you probably know. So that's the first step making slightly more complex molecules, like